Welcome to the 3D Heart Project series of videos. My name is Carolina Escudero, and I am a pediatric cardiologist at the Stollery Children's Hospital in Edmonton. Today, I'm going to go through the anatomy of a heart after the Fontan procedure. This is the final stage of the single ventricle palliation. When we say palliation, we mean that this surgery cannot repair a heart with only one functional ventricle, but instead, allows blood to flow to where it needs to go. This surgery is typically performed between two and four years of age. Please visit our website at 3dheartproject.com to review videos on types of hearts with one functional ventricle for which a Fontan procedure would ultimately be necessary, including hypoplastic left heart syndrome with the Norwood procedure. Before watching this video, we would recommend to watch our video on the normal anatomy of the heart and on the Glenn procedure, also called the bidirectional cable pulmonary anastomosis. You can use the links provided to view these videos. We also have a glossary of definitions for this video available on the website. The models will be shown to you as if you are looking at the heart inside the body of someone in front of you. Each 3D model of the heart can be made to show either the muscle of the heart or the blood that is contained within the chambers of the heart. Today, we are going to be using a model that shows the muscle surface, which is called a myocardial model. This is because the muscle that creates the walls of the heart surface is called the myocardium. This type of model shows the surface of the outside of the heart. If cut open, this type of model can also show the inner walls of the heart that separate the chambers. This type of model can be used to show if there are holes in these inner walls that lead to connections between the chambers. I'm going to start with this model of a heart with the Fontan procedure. This heart would sit in the chest like this. The model is colored in blue to represent the deoxygenated or oxygen poor blood and red to indicate the oxygenated or oxygen rich blood. We will go through the flow of blood through this heart to explain how a heart with a Fontan procedure pumps blood. Remember that a Fontan procedure is done for many different types of congenital heart diseases that have one functional ventricle or pumping chamber instead of two. The deoxygenated blue blood from the upper body travels through the veins of the upper body and enters the superior vena cava located here, while the blood from the lower body enters the inferior vena cava located here. In the typical or normal heart, the superior and inferior vena cava are attached directly to the heart. At the time of the Glenn procedure, the superior vena cava was disconnected from the heart and attached to the pulmonary arteries, which you can see here. Please see our video on a heart after the Glenn procedure for further details. At the time of the Fontan procedure, the inferior vena cava is detached from the heart and is attached to the pulmonary arteries using a tube. You can see the connection of the inferior vena cava to the pulmonary arteries located here. What that means is that now all the deoxygenated blue blood returning from the body can travel through the superior and inferior vena cava and go directly into the pulmonary arteries, which bring the blood to the lungs. This is often called the Fontan circuit. This means that the blood traveling to the lungs does not actually enter the heart and is not pumped by a ventricle or pumping chamber anymore. This is a major change in the way that the body handles the flow of blood for patients with a Fontan circulation, and this increases the pressure in the veins in the body. I'm now going to turn the heart around. Here we see the Fontan circuit where the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and the pulmonary arteries have all been connected together allowing the blue blood from the body to enter the lungs directly. 
The blood that travels to the lungs now comes back to the heart as oxygen-rich or oxygenated red blood. The blood enters back into the heart through the pulmonary veins located here. That blood will then enter into an atrium. The blood will then travel to the only effective ventricle or pumping chamber that the heart has. The blood is now pumped through the aorta to be pumped back to the body. The details of these connections will change based on the underlying heart condition that the person was born with, but the general principle of the oxygenated blood traveling to the heart, being pumped by the only effective pumping chamber or ventricle, and then out to the body is the same. One of the major differences after the Fontan procedure is that now mostly oxygenated red blood is going to the body. So the oxygen saturations or oxygen levels in the body increase. The heart that I am showing you is how the blood would flow if there is no connection between the Fontan circuit and the heart. Now I am going to show you the same heart but colored differently to show the flow of blood if there is a fenestration or a small connection left between the Fontan circuit and the heart. In some cases at the time of the surgery, there is a small hole left between the Fontan circuit and the heart. This is called a fenestration or a Fontan fenestration. This small hole is left there intentionally. The reason to leave a Fontan fenestration is to serve as a pop-off valve if the pressure in the Fontan circuit is high or it is harder for the blood to travel directly to the lungs. When all the deoxygenated blood flows directly to the pulmonary arteries and the lungs through the Fontan circuit without being pumped there by the heart, the pressure in the veins in the body increases. This can be hard for the body to handle. This is why the fenestration or pop-off valve may be used to allow some of the blood coming back from the body to directly enter the heart if the pressure in the Fontan circuit is high. There are many different reasons to either use a fenestration or not use a fenestration when the Fontan procedure is performed. This will depend on the patient, the details of their heart disease, and the place that the surgery is performed. Let's review the anatomy of the Fontan circulation. The Fontan procedure is the completion of the procedures to treat children who are born with one functional pumping chamber. The superior vena cava was disconnected from the heart and attached to the pulmonary arteries at the time of the previous Glenn procedure. The Fontan procedure disconnects the inferior vena cava from the heart and connects it to the pulmonary arteries. Now all the deoxygenated blue blood that flows back from the superior and inferior vena cava will enter the pulmonary arteries to flow to the lungs directly without needing a ventricle or pumping chamber to send the blood to the lungs. The oxygenated or red blood that comes back from the lungs enters the heart through the pulmonary veins and into the atria to then travel into the ventricle or pumping chamber and is then pumped to the body via the aorta. In some cases, there is a small hole or fenestration left between the Fontan circuit and the heart. This allows a small amount of the blood from the body to enter the heart, serving as a pop-off valve if it is harder for the body to get the blood through the Fontan circuit and into the pulmonary arteries and lungs. Thank you for watching our video on a heart with the Fontan procedure. Learning the anatomy of the heart can be challenging. You may want to watch this video again or review our other content at 3dheartproject.com to better understand this or other similar heart defects. Thanks again for watching.